Questions 39 through 42. Listen to the following talk given by a pet store owner. Once you have decided to share your life with one of our cats, you must decide whether you want an alley cat or a pedigree cat. Let me explain what those terms mean. An alley cat is one with no special breeding or ancestry. It is just a common cat whose parents are of mixed background. This type of cat, unfortunately, often goes homeless and has to hunt for food in the garbage cans found in alleys. And that's how it got its name. A pedigree cat, on the other hand, is a purebred feline whose ancestry has been recorded and whose history can be traced back several generations. We sell both kinds of cats here, our pedigree cats, of course, being the more expensive of the two types. But... Both types of cats can turn out to be perfect pets. Number 39. Who is the speaker probably talking to? Number 40. According to the speaker, what is an alley cat? Number 41. What does the term breeding mean in this talk? Number 42. According to the speaker, what do the two types of cats have in common? Questions 43 through 47. Listen to the following remarks from a history lecture. I spoke yesterday about the construction of ancient Viking ships. Today I'd like to discuss the trans-ocean voyages that the Norse made in these open boats, voyages made without compasses or charts. Somehow the Vikings managed to get across the North Atlantic and back home again. Although the shortest distance between the coast of Norway and Greenland is about 900 miles, the Vikings preferred to take a longer route south of Iceland and thereby avoid pack ice. This was a voyage of well over a thousand miles. How did Norse sailors find land after days of sailing out of sight of land? Well, experienced sailors used the relative position of the stars to help them navigate. The sun's position could also be noted, but it moves across the sky and its position alters a little every day, so it was not easy for the Vikings to use. However, even when out of sight of land, an experienced sailor could find information. As there are landmarks on land, so there are at sea. Whales gathered in large numbers to feed at an area half a day's sail south of Iceland. Migrating birds on their annual flight were also helpful because they always followed the same route. So, geese flying between Britain and Iceland were of particular use to the Vikings. One Icelander also took ravens with him, releasing them until one day they didn't return. He followed their direction and found land. In 900 A.D., ingenuity had to take the place of technology. Number 43. What is the main topic of the talk? Number 44. What did the speaker talk about yesterday? Number 45. Why didn't the Vikings take the shortest route between Norway and Greenland? Number 46. How were whales helpful to the Vikings?
Number 47. What can be inferred about Vikings from the talk? Questions 48 through 50. Listen to a talk given in a nutrition course. Now, if I remember correctly, last class we spoke about gardening and how to get the best nutritional value out of it. You all gave me excellent suggestions in your journals, and I have made comments in them too. I will give your journals back to you at the end of class today. In your journals you mentioned how the design of the garden and the timing of the harvest are very important. Today let's look more closely at the vegetables that we are going to plant in the garden. For example, green snap beans are known to contain twice as much vitamin A as does the yellow variety. Actually, soybeans, which I know that some of you have already indicated a distaste for, are far better for you than both green and yellow beans. Soybeans are a very rich source of vitamin A, and they contain 10% vegetable protein as well. For those who are not bean lovers, there is still hope. I would suggest cauliflower, broccoli, and cabbage to you. Broccoli is better than cauliflower in that it contains 40 times more vitamin A and has more vitamin B and C, too. Finally, small cabbages are rich in precious vitamin C. Vitamin C, by the way, is a great agent against disease and stress. I know that you are all preparing for final exams, and stress is a factor for you these days, so I thought that I might mention that. Number 48. What is the main topic of this talk? Number 49. Why are soybeans so important? Number 50. Why do you think that the speaker mentioned the importance of vitamin C 